what is up guys all right so today we're gonna try to analyze a switch so how do you actually use switch and how to utilize it correctly all right so switch is to locate it is right beside the loop icon and it's under the flow control section as well um, so what is a switch or switches in general they allow you to have multiple conditions in your program in this case you can see a tick over here and a false so basically it's a true or false statement for the condition all right so depending on what um, how are you programming your robot so for example if you want your touch sensor in this case connected to port 1 so let's say you have a media motor I'll just give a very very simple example and you should be able to understand this alright so I'll turn this to off I'll turn this to on for okay on for rotation is fine one rotation alright so what this means that if you were to press so since it's condition one it means pressed if you were to press your touch sensor your motor A, medium motor A would rotate for one rotation if you did not press the sensor then the motor would not move at all so basically it does nothing so if you were to download this program it should work but only once so how do you want uh, how do you make this program repeat so basically you are supposed to put it in a loop alright so it's a very common mistake that students and teachers alike make so sometimes when we use switch we tend to forget to put it in a loop because most of the time you want it to work continuously you want the robot to continuously sense the environment uh, and the sensors to continuously sense for uh, a reaction to it you know like the ultrasonic sensor you want it to constantly detect the distance so you want to put this in here all right so if you were to download this program then technically it should work continuously so every time you press your touch sensor your motor A would move for one rotation if you did not then it would do nothing your sensor would not move at all so ideally this is one of the most basic example of how you can use a switch so let me give a different condition so this time I would try to include ultrasonic all right because that's a very common one so let's use uh, let's use inches this time all right so imagine you have 50 inches all right 50 inches is a bit it's a bit too much let's say 5 inches all right so to do a basic obstacle avoidance or wall detect wall detecting robot so ideally this is how you do it so if your robot detects uh, the ultras ultrasonic sensor detects within 5 inches so technically you want your robot to reverse so let's uh, get a move tank so we can set a specific amount of time so assuming that your motor uh, reverse is minus and forward is uh, positive so let's say reverse for one second let's say your left motor is A and your right motor is C so a very good example so left motor A right motor C so your robot should reverse and then turn let's use the move steering maybe it will turn around uh, 90 degrees to the right so let's change that to seconds uh, standardize it one second all right a and c and then if your robot did not sense anything it should continuously move forward so in that case we can use move steering it's fine set it to on and left motor a right motor c all right so ideally this is one of uh, a pretty good example that you can uh, download this and try it out on a obstacle detecting or obstacle avoidance robot so if your robot did not detect anything false then it will continuously move forward 
at half the power. Else, if you detect something within a threshold of 5 inches, then it would reverse for 1 second and then turn right for 1 second. Ideally, the 45, depending on your robot's design, the 45 should give you around 90 degrees right, hopefully. Alright, so this is how usually people program their robot to detect an obstacle constantly. Obviously, you want to put it in a loop. So how do you use a loop within a loop? I mean, sorry, how do you use a switch within a switch? So you can do that. So obviously, uh, same concept here. Let's say... Alright, let's say uh, you have another switch inside here. Your touch sensor's true condition relies on the touch sensor on port 1. So if we were to put this in here, if you never put anything, it does nothing. Alright, so same thing here. If your robot uh, did not detect anything, it will continuously move straight. If we detect something within 5 inches, it will wait for the touch sensor on port 1 to be pressed. So after you press, only it will reverse and it will turn right. If you did not press this, it will come here and it will do nothing. Your robot will do nothing. Alright, so this is a very good example of how to use a switch within a switch. Obviously, not the most ideal example, but yeah, there, will be, there are plenty of examples out there which you can search online but ideally you can always use a switch within a switch within a switch and you can always branch it out uh, along the way so just remember that one switch has two conditions a true and a false so ideally if uh, you can always branch out on that condition even further so this true could be a true another true and a false if I put the switch in within this true and yeah, I know it gets confusing, uh, especially if you're new to programming, it gets really, really confusing. But throughout your practice, you should be able to, you know, understand the concept and grasp the concept slowly. Alright, so that's all I have uh, for the switch and how to use them correctly. If you have any questions, you can feel, feel free to leave it in the comment sections below. I will try my best to answer as much of them as I can. Alright, so hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to, you can consider subscribing. I will try to post more tutorial videos on EV3 programming, preferably once a week uh, or more if I have more time. Alright, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.